In most flight regimes, the aircraft's gonna be flying at a relatively low angle attack. And for example, if the aircraft is flying along, it's pitched up relative to its uh, flight path vector. And that angle between its flight path and where the nose is pointed is gonna be your angle of attack. For our high angle of attack testing, we're actually looking at angles of attack higher than 20 degrees. There are several different phenomena that occur when you get to high angle of attack. First of all, uh, as the angle of attack increases, the flow, which is normally very smooth over the surfaces, starts to separate from the surfaces and you get a lot of turbulence. So first we have the basic controllability problem of uh, high angle of attack and, and flow separation. We also have the, uh, the challenge of having really, relatively low dynamic pressures. What we're testing to see is that the aircraft is still controllable at the high angle of attack regime. Once we are able to characterize the control characteristics of the aircraft at that high angle of attack regime, we move into intentional departures. The purpose of intentional departures is to validate if the aircraft gets out of control, how well our recovery modes work. We can actually put the airplane into a, a spin. We get the airplane established and that out of control condition, and then when the control room calls, we, we paddle off that, that condition. The test point really doesn't start until we tell the pilot to paddle off controls release. And what's happening there is all the control surfaces are going to their maximum control power deflection. When the airplane wakes up, when I, when I let go of this flight test aid that put it into this condition, the airplane wakes up, um, it sees the yaw rate and, and the high angle of attack, and it immediately deflects flight control surfaces really pretty much to their limit to get the yaw rate under control first, and once it gets the yaw rate under control, then it pitches out of the maneuver. The pilot is really uh, along for the ride. Auto, recovery, auto. So what this testing gives to the warfighter is it, it gives us the capability to say that when you're going out and engaging a, uh, an enemy target that you won't lose control of the aircraft and you still have the maneuvering capabilities needed to engage that target. The pilot's having to observe limits. He naturally has to back off from those limits. So it not only takes a lot of his attention to fly the airplane, he really can't get the full capability out of the airplane because he can't fly it right to those limits. And that's what we're going to be doing in the departure resistance testing. Make sure that we can slam this airplane around with a minimum number of pilot rules and he can still extract all of the tactical capability out of the airplane.